everybody, welcome to Retro Game Super Leagues, where we rank all of the games in a selected category. I'm Brian, also known as UK Gen Zoidberg, and as there's a brand new release in the Top Spin series on modern consoles this week, I thought I would uh, rank all of the tennis games on the Amiga. However, thanks to one pesky 1991 release, I've had to change that to Racket Sports games instead, but we'll get to that one in a bit. So uh, when you're sat watching Wimbledon at the end of next month and you decide that you want to play a bit of virtual tennis, you might well be wondering which ones you should be playing on the A500 Mini. I'm here to help you make that choice, but as these rankings are merely my own opinion, uh, please don't get angry if your favourite game isn't as high as you would like. As always, I will be placing all of the games in this list in one of the five categories that you see before you, starting with Essential and going down to Rubbish. Um, and I've got 19 games to go through, so uh, let's just get on with it. First up, we have 3D World Tennis, which came out in 1992 from Simul Mondo. And this is a perfect example of all those Amiga games that seem to have menus populated with icons rather than text. I spent far too much time navigating around menu screens trying to work out how to just play a match of tennis, and it got really annoying. Um, once you do actually get into the game, the graphics are actually pretty good. Um, although the angle is probably a little bit too low. The input from your controller seems to bear no relation into what your character actually does on screen, which makes it very annoying to play. Um, if I gave points for ambition, this would be a lot higher in the list. But as it is, I'm going to start off by putting this one in the poor category. Next up, we have Adidas Championship Tiebreak, which came out in 1990. Um, this was released as just tiebreak in other territories, um, but Ocean Software picked it up for publishing in the UK. Uh, it's developed by Starbyte Software, and it's got a pretty innovative control system, I must admit. Um, you don't use the fire button at all in games. Instead, you simply hold the direction that you want and release the joystick at the right time to take your shots. Um, takes a little bit of getting used to, but when you do get used to it, there, it, it makes for a surprising amount of depth to the gameplay. What lets it down slightly is the graphics and sound effects, which are nothing more than okay. Uh, the scrolling is at least smooth, and it's a shame that there's not more play options available, av available to you. So um, I'm going to stick this one in the good category. Next up, we have Advantage Tennis, which was released in 1991 from the French publisher Infograms. This is one of a selection of games that uses 3D graphics rather than sprites to illustrate the action. And the 3D graphics here are nicely animated, um, but ultimately they're a little bit too messy to make the game in any way enjoyable. I also found that the collision detection is pretty appalling. A lot of the time you will swing the racket and it looks like you haven't hit the ball at all, but you actually have. I also found it really annoying that you had to click the fire button to tell the game that you are ready before every single shot. That was, which soon becomes very annoying, especially when you are the one serving. Um, again, ambitious, but not, but not really fun. So I'm going to stick this one in the poor category, but I think it is better than 3D World Tennis. Next up, we have Center Court, which came out in 1995, published by Acid Software. This is a pretty decent game overall, got a full career mode with multiple tournaments that will keep you busy. I think the worst thing about the graphics is the players themselves, who actually all look identical, regardless of which, regardless of which character you pick, and they're all animated pretty badly. Um, on the plus side, the gameplay is fast moving and smooth, even if the controls do lack a little bit, little bit of precision at times. Although it is enjoyable enough in the long run, um, it can't quite shake that air of all-round cheapness through the presentation, and that's going to stop it from going any higher than the good category, and I think I would put this one above tiebreak. Next we have Centre Court 2, which is from the same developer, um, and this is a game that was actually uh, almost like 99% complete in 1997, but then it was abandoned for one reason or another. Um, but uh, it was miraculously completed and released on the English Amiga board in 2016. Uh, presentation is a huge improvement over the original, um, and the sound also creates a fantastic atmosphere. It's all round a much better game than the first one. It's got a good selection of difficulty and training options, um, which will help you get better at the game. 
but just like the first game the controls are not quite as responsive as you'd want them to be and that's what stops it from, from being an essential game but I am going to put this one in the recommended category. Next we have Grand Slam Tennis which came out in 1987 from Infinity Software. Very very early release for, for the Amiga. The first thing that you'll notice about this one that makes it stand out is that um, it has no joystick control at all. Instead, you use a bizarre combination of mouse and the numeric keyboard for different shot types. However, surprisingly, um, you do get used to it pretty quickly. The timing of the shots can be quite tricky, as a number of times it will look like the ball is past you, but you can actually still manage to hit it. And because it's a game that you run through Workbench rather than the auto, auto running when you put the disc in, the movement is all quite slow and jerky, which um, does hurt the game a little. One neat little touch that the developers did include, though, is the fact that you can um, question line calls by clicking on the umpire whenever you want, which is a fun little addition, even if it is utterly pointless. Um, so I am, I think I am going to put this one in the good category as well, although I'm going to put it down at the bottom, so I'll put it below tiebreak. Next up, we have International 3D Tennis, which came out in 1990, uh, developed by Sensible Software and published by Palace. And this is probably the one real blot on Sensible Software's CV, um, even if uh, it probably, even if it was considered to be technically impressive at the time of its release. And the 3D graphics here are definitely better than those in uh, 3D World Tennis and Advantage Tennis, but it's still pretty basic and lacks detail. In terms of the gameplay, I found that it was almost impossible to time your shot, as it doesn't seem to recognise the button presses for at least a couple of seconds after you after you press them. Being able to switch the camera angles by pressing the F keys was a nice touch, but it doesn't save it overall. A very disappointing release, especially considering who the developer was. Um, and this one's going to go in the poor category as well. And I think in gameplay terms, Advantage Tennis is better, so I'm going to put it below that one. Next up we have International Tennis which came out in 1992 from Zeppelin Games and this one plays a surprisingly good game of tennis uh, with controls that behave exactly as, you, as you'd want them to. Um, Zeppelin Games always had an air of cheapness about them and this one is actually, is actually um, a, lot, a lot better than you'd, than you'd be expecting. The speech however does sound like it was done by the programmer himself or a member of his family. What lets, the, what lets the game down completely though is the fact that there is no tournament or tournament mode or career. Um, all you, you just get the option of single matches in singles or doubles. So the game has no lasting appeal whatsoever, which probably gives away the fact that it was a budget release. Um, so that's what's going to stop it from going any higher than the good category. And I think I'm going to put this one above Grand Slam Tennis. Next up, we have the one game that stops this from being a tennis game list. This is Jahangir Khan's World Championship Squash, released in 1991 from Chrysalis Software. And Squash makes for makes for a pretty decent um, a decent video game. It must be said. Um, the isometric view here looks really nice, even if it doesn't really work from a gameplay point of view. Um, I can remember having a lot of fun in, with this one in two-player mode with my friends back uh, back in the 90s. Um, but, but playing it by yourself is incredibly frustrating. Um, definitely kudos for being the only squash game that I can think of, um, but it doesn't really warrant long-term play because, there's, because, because of the lack of options. I'm going to put this one in the good category. If you do manage to get it, play it two-player, then it will probably go towards the top of the good category, but I'm just going to stick it down towards the bottom, and I'm going to put it above Grand Slam Tennis. Next we have Passing Shot, which came out in 1989, developed by Tech Software and published by Imageworks. And unfortunately this one has some really appalling sound. Um, it will make you want to cut your ears off rather than listen to the music. And unforgivably, there's no option to switch it off. Um, the overhead view doesn't really work in this one because you can't really tell the flight of the ball and you can't even see your player on screen half the time. And what um, and what really hurts the gameplay is the fact that the player and ball movement is incredibly slow um, making it really quite boring to play so this one's going to go in the poor category as well and i think i'm going to put it at the bottom below 3d world tennis next up we have pro tennis simulator which was released in 1990 and of course this game had to have an entry in the codemasters simulator series in the list just like international tennis this one was a budget release Unlike International Tennis though, this is a woefully basic game with no tournament modes and the players don't even change ends during matches. 
Um, it randomly changes the colour of the court every time you start the game, you, uh, rather than giving you the option to choose for yourself. Does the player look like he's holding a lollipop in his non-racket hand? Something that bugged me while I was playing it. Uh, this is the type of release that gives budget games a bad reputation, and this one's going to be the first entry in the rubbish category. Next we come to Pro Tennis Tour, which was released in 1989, published by Ubisoft and developed by Bluebyte. This is known as Great Courts in some countries, and it's a well-made, even if it is ultimately quite boring, tennis simulator. What you can do, though, is see the foundations of what was to become in its much better sequel, which we'll be talking about in a second. Um, player movement and shots are OK, but they lack finesse, making it a bit of a chore to play. And for some reason, the uh, two player option is hidden away in the, pra in the practice menu. Got no idea why that, why that would be the case. Um, this one can't go any higher than the good category. And I think I'm going to put it just above international tennis. Now we come to Pro Tennis Tour 2, which came out in 1991, uh, once again developed by Blue Bite. And if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you may have noticed that um, when I did my all-time top 10 games back in 1992 for Amiga Action, I included this game in my top 10. Quite simply, the two-player mode is one of the best multiplayer games on the Amiga. Um, if you do manage to play it in four-player mode, then it's actually one of the best multiplayer games of my entire life. Make sure you switch off the automatic movement in the menu, as you will really need the freedom to position yourself in, to, in order to play the shots correctly. It's got high quality presentation all over, and the icing on the cake is the realistic sound and well animated players. This is still a great game all these years later, so this one's going to go in the essential category. Make sure you play it. Next we have a game called Smash, which uh, came out in 1992 from Idea Software in Italy. And this is, this is one, of the, one of the games that I have played for the first time in creating this list. And when you think about it, a side-on view tennis game really shouldn't work. Um, but this one surprisingly does. Um, it's got excellent, bright and well animated graphics with smooth parallax scrolling on the background. Play it in two-player mode and it's an absolute laugh riot. Um, thanks to the thanks to just how fast the gameplay is. What that does mean though is that it is ultimately a little, a little bit limited as a single player game. But I think you're definitely going to enjoy this one more than you'd think. And I'm going to stick this one in the recommended category. But I think uh, Centre Court Tennis 2 is better. So I'm going to put it below that one. Now I'm going to break with tradition here um, in, the, in the way that I would um, cover things alphabetically. And I'm going to talk about Tennis Champs first. Um, this came out in 1995, developed by Mental Software, and it was released on a cover disc with Amiga Power magazine. It is quite simply one of the best cover disc games any magazine has ever given away. Um, it's an arcade style tennis game that was made in Amos, and it's very reminiscent of Namco's uh, Smash Tennis on the snares. What I liked about this one is that the characters all have different stats, but the game doesn't tell you what they are, and it's uh, really and it's really good fun to try out each of the characters to, characters to see which one matches your playstyle. When you first load it up, the gameplay is pretty tough, but it won't take long before it clicks, especially if you manage to play it in two-player mode. So uh, this one's well worth a download, and you should be playing it. But because of what I'm about to talk about in a second, I can't really put this one higher than the recommended category. So I'm going to put this one above Centre Court Tennis in the recommended. Now we come to Super Tennis Champs, um, which is basically an expanded version of the original. The, um, the first game was basically sent in to Amiga Format Magazine for consideration in their, in their public domain pages. That, the people on that magazine enjoyed it so much that they gave it to Amiga Power to put on their cover disc, but they also submitted it to Audiogenic for retail release. And Audiogenic picked it up straight away, but uh, asked for it to be recoded in Blitz Basic. Adding, it added uh, two button joypad support, it's got more gameplay modes, it's got a lot more characters to choose from, including data discs that were released for even more characters. Um, now includes doubles matches and it supports the four player adapter. Basically, it's um, everything that Tennis Champs was, but even more so. One thing that I really liked is that after each point, if you're quick enough, you can tap the fire button to celebrate each point or smash your racket if you've uh, if you've lost the point, and it really does add to the fun. Definitely one of the better games on this list. This one's going to go in the essential category, and I'm going to put it below Pro Tennis Tour 2. 
Next, we come to Tennis Cup, which came out in 1989 from Larissa L, published by Electronic Zoo in the UK. Um, this one's got really good presentation with good attention to detail and nice animation. Uh, it's got a good split screen view, which means that you'll never feel handicapped by being at the top of the screen, which is always a problem in tennis games. One thing that lets it down slightly, though, is the fact that when you move towards the edge of the screen, it scrolls jerkily, and that can be really disorientating in the heat of a rally. One thing that elevates this game a little bit, though, is the fact that it allows you to build your own player through playing tournaments and some enjoyable training sessions, and that and that gives the game a um, much greater lifespan than most, and I think that's going to put it in the recommended category, and I'm going to put this one above Centre Court Tennis 2. Next, we come to Tennis Cup 2, which actually came out three years after the original, and, and, and considering in the early 90s, that's a long time for a sequel. It's not that much of a huge leap over the original. Um, you can actually now turn off the split screen mode if you're playing it on your own. Um, the graphics are more detailed than the first game, even if they don't look quite as nice overall because they're a little bit messy in places. Make sure that you play the WHD load version as that, as that negates all of the really long loading times that you got if you played it on original hardware, which dragged the game down back in the 90s. To be honest though, I, I expected more from the sequel. I mean, as you, as you probably won't get any more from this than you would if you played the original. Um, so it's gonna go, it is gonna go above the, the first game, but um, only just, as it's not really that much different. And that brings us to the final game, which is Turtle Table Tennis Simulator, which was also from Starbite Software and released in 1989. In my lifetime, there have only been two table tennis games that I've ever really liked. There was Rockstar Table Tennis on the Xbox, obviously, and Ping Pong on the Spectrum. And it's that latter game that this one tries to be a clone of. Um, but it is let down by an utterly terrible control system. You get a choice of playing it with joystick or mouse, and the joystick options are easily the worst, um, and the, with the mouse control making it play a little bit like Shuffle Puck Cafe, only nowhere near as good. Serving the ball is not intuitive in the slightest, and I found that uh, waggling the mouse around seemed like the only thing that, that really worked for me. Um, I didn't like this one at all, so this one's going to be the second game that goes in the rubbish category. And I think I'm going to, but I think I would rather play this than uh, Pro Tennis Simulator, so I'm going to put it above that one. So there you have it. That's uh, 19 racket sports games ranked from best to worst. If there's a game that you think is missing, it will be because I haven't played it. So let me know in the comments if there are any titles like that. Um, you can also find a link to our tier maker page below if you want to rank these games yourself. Uh, please feel free to share your rankings with me on social media if you do. You can catch all future episodes of this series early, as well as episodes of the re-review and more, um, by becoming a channel VIP member. Uh, you can find details of how to do that in a link in the video description. If you did enjoy this video, please do remember to like and subscribe. And I'll be back next week, uh, where I'll be re-reviewing the Amiga version of Sega's Alien Storm. Until then, happy retro gaming. Bye for now.